This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. The weekend was a parenting issue that didn't happen, and it, downtown is the victim. Six people shot in the heart of downtown. The efforts police say they are now taking to make sure people feel safe in our city. It's been necessary that I scale back my professional commitments and focus on my health and family. After eight and a half years in office, Marion County Prosecutor Terry Curry announces his resignation due to his health. And a decision from Rome regarding Brebuff High School, what it means for now. Now at 6, we are working for you and asking what steps are being taken to keep people safe when they visit downtown Indianapolis. This comes after six people were shot Saturday night near the Circle Center Mall. RTV6's Stephanie Wade spoke with downtown IMPD officers in charge of keeping our city safe. Yeah, she explains what they're doing now and what's at stake with this kind of violence. It was outside this stake and shake off of West Maryland Street where a fight between two groups of teens turned ugly, leaving six people shot, three of which were just bystanders, caught at the wrong place at the wrong time. Traditionally, it's very safe. In fact, it's the safest part of our city. But what we're seeing time and time again is unaccompanied minors coming downtown after 11, 1130, bringing the violence from their neighborhoods into downtown. That's not welcome. Bob Schultz with the Downtown Indie Inc., whose mission is to make downtown a place where people want to live, work, and play, says it's challenging to bring businesses down here when we see violence like Saturday night, where three teens and three adults were shot just blocks from Monument Circle. The downtown businesses are tired of it, and they're tired of their businesses having to pay the price for this. We had this same conversation just months ago about violence downtown. What have you done since? Okay. So what we, what we have to do, or what we've been doing, is we evaluate the violence almost on a daily basis. Captain Mann with the IMPD Downtown District says they're going to revisit their patrols, shift resources like their mobile camera to hot spots they've identified, whether it be to monitor juveniles leaving in the mall or on the canal as a problem we saw six months ago. They're still searching for the shooter in this case and gave us this picture of a person of interest. If you recognize this man, last seen wearing a dark colored sweatshirt with light stripes on the sleeve and dark jeans, call police immediately. We want people to come and enjoy this great city, whether it's the restaurants or the hotels, but we cannot tolerate the violence that's associated with it. So um, we will continue to put our efforts towards whatever it is that, that we think strategically is causing the violence for downtown. Working for you, Stephanie Wade, RTV6. Now, surprising news today. The Marion County prosecutor is resigning for health reasons. A battle with advanced prostate cancer is behind Terry Curry's decision. RTV6's Rafael Sanchez has been following the story since it broke and is here now with what comes next. Rafael. Uh, Mark, good evening. Terry Curry called this a tough decision. He fought back tears as he explained the very public way, a fight that most of us would rather keep private. Curry, as you can see, was met with applause as he entered and exited the room in which he announced he was stepping down with three years left in his term. He said, based on his health, this was best for him and his family. He says as he walks away from this position, he is clear, he tells me, about what he wants people to remember about his administration. How we restored integrity to the office, that people in the office have the ability, and I'm going to tell you, People are going to shake their heads <clears throat> that they have the ability to say, I work at the Marion County Prosecutor's Office and be proud about it. So let's put Terry Curry's job in perspective. His tenure in office will be most remembered for two of the biggest and most sensational criminal cases in our state. The biggest, the convictions of the people behind the 2012 fatal Southside explosion in Indianapolis, which required trials in South Bend and Fort Wayne. In 2013, the other big case was the conviction of former Metro Police Officer David Bassard, who was intoxicated at the time that he killed a motorcyclist. A Curry came to office in 2010, re-elected in 2014, and again in 2018. And prior to that, he was a deputy prosecutor for six years. Tonight, a wide variety of people are praising his tenure in office, including the parents of IMPD officer David Moore. Their son was killed in the line of duty back in 2011. I can't imagine going through anything harder than the loss of our son. And Terry was always there. Didn't matter when, what I needed, he was always there. 
Uh, so what's next? Curry is staying with the office as a deputy prosecutor with the grand jury. His replacement will be Ryan Mears. He'll be the interim prosecutor until the Democratic Party picks a successor. It could be Mears or someone else to finish Curry's term through December of 2022. Mark? All right, Rafael Sanchez for us tonight. A reprieve for Brebeuf Jesuit High School in Indianapolis after Indianapolis Archbishop Charles Thompson declared in June it would no longer be recognized as a Catholic institution. Brebeuf leaders appealed that decision to Rome, and they now report the Congregation for Catholic Education has suspended the Archbishop's decree on an interim basis while the appeal process continues. So that means the school can resume school masses. This all started because the school refused to fire a gay teacher in a same-sex marriage. After that, the Archdiocese no longer recognized Baroff as a Catholic institution. It is not known how long the appeal process will take. The Howard County Sheriff's Office is making changes after several inmates died by suicide this year. Call 6 Investigates' Kara Kenny has been asking questions since March. She finally got those answers. Kara joins us now with how the agency plans to better address this problem. Mark and Amanda, three people have died so far this year after they hung themselves in the Howard County Jail. Two of them with bed sheets, another with a payphone cord. We talk with family members who say the jail could have done more to protect their loved ones. Natasha King picture there and Sarah Castile died back in March. Casey Rodrug died on September 18th. All three were inmates in the Howard County Jail. Now keep in mind the state of Indiana typically has about 8 to 12 suicides for the entire state in a year. We've asked the Howard County Sheriff's Department for a copy of their suicide prevention policy. We have not received that. However, the sheriff says they have implemented several changes. They created signage in each housing unit that has a free hotline to reach a mental health advocate right away. They adjusted their shift change procedure to create more officer inmate contact. They will be implementing a crisis intervention team training for all medical personnel and correctional supervisors. And last Lastly, they contracted with a full-time mental health specialist who started this month. The Howard County Sheriff's Department and jail is facing a lawsuit from an inmate's family. James Patterson family filed suit last month, alleging they failed to evaluate Patterson despite him being suicidal, nor did they place him under me mental health evaluation. The sheriff declined to comment on the lawsuit. Mark and Amanda. Kara, the Carrie Kenny for us tonight. Also from Cal Six Investigates tonight, an audit will soon review how the state is providing rides to the neediest Hoosiers in Indiana. Currently, Georgia-based Southeast Trans manages the system that coordinates the rides Hoosiers need to get to dialysis treatment or visit a doctor. Call Six Investigates has been following this story for a year. We've profiled a few people who have complained about the system. The audit will take a full look at the transportation system and determine where there could be gaps in service. For the second time this month, Indiana Governor Eric Holcomb is on an international trip to drum up business benefiting Hoosiers. He and a delegation of economic development and business leaders are arriving today in China. They will spend several days there and then move on to India. At the end of their trip, they will see the Pacers play the first ever NBA game in India. Frito-Lay is once again investing in its plant in Frankfurt and adding jobs. The city announced today the company plans to invest an additional $70 million in the Clinton County facility, add a new snack line, and expand a warehouse. This is expected to generate 45 new jobs. The company added jobs and new snack lines last year as well. Still ahead on the news at 6, what a sight, a crumbling building, debris everywhere, two vehicles with six people inside. How this all turned out, coming up. Also ahead, future athletic trainers, coaches, and physical therapists in the making. The program getting high school kids an early start on possible careers. And did you spot the puddles outside your house this morning? Evidence of the overnight rain and early today. Not our only chance this week. We'll zero in on a few opportunities. That's coming up. This is RTV6 News at 6, working for you. Well, take a look at this. This is the result after two vehicles slammed into a building on the city's north side just before noon. This happened at East 22nd Street and College Avenue. A car and a truck hit the building, which appeared to be vacant. The truck ended up inside the building, and the car was outside, covered in debris. Five people were in the truck, one in the car. Amazingly, no one was seriously injured. City inspectors will take a look and determine if the building needs to be demolished altogether. 
Hiring Hoosiers is our special project that links you to jobs, skills, and resources. Having a great idea for a new product is one thing, but turning that idea into a physical item takes skill and determination. A car salesman from Lawrence is hoping his product gets picked up by Shark Tank in the upcoming season. I met Ira Mercurio at Shark Tank's open casting call at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway this summer and learned how Ira created his easy rec rack. If Ira Mercurio is not at his day job, he is still at work. I see it and I build it. If it works, I leave it. If it doesn't, I tweak it. The car salesman of nearly 25 years is taking on a new sales pitch. His own innovation, the easy recreational rack, and it's a full-time job. Ira lives in the Indianapolis area and is an avid kayaker, traveling with his kayak locally and nationally. But he found getting his boat to water was not such an easy task. So, and I looked, I searched for something that was similar to this, I just didn't find it, and I knew I could build it, so I did. I kind of had this idea how I could make a loading system to go up on the top of a car, and I just started building my garage. And just two weeks after starting to tinker with his idea, he had this. This was where it all started. This is the first one I was trying to figure out, a rolling carriage for the top of my car. Ira's Easy Rec Rack gets bolted to the top of your car, and with its rolling carriage feature, it makes lifting an 80-pound kayak a piece of cake. So why does he spend all of his spare time on this? A necessity. If they've ever put a kayak up on top of their car or tried to by themselves, they already know the answer to that. <laughs> They're heavy, okay. and it just helps. One person can do it real easy. Now, two years later, Ira's Easy Rec Rack is on top of cars across the country and around the world. And it can hold more than just kayaks. Ira's clients have used it for furniture, camping gear, and even a kid's mini car. Just roll it into my car. All right, that was way easier than I thought it would be. But as easy as it is for just about anyone to use, it's not cheap to make, let alone to purchase. Probably close to $400 okay. just to just to manufacture it. The current one sells for um, $749. While calmer waters are ideal for Ira's favorite pastime, he is hoping to take his innovation to the West Coast and right into the shark tank to prove even the best sharks need a ride to the water. If I can get my numbers up, hopefully I can get my cost down. Um, if I get my cost down, I think the numbers will automatically go up. So it's kind of a, it, it's, it's a perpetual thing. Um, but I need help because that takes money. So. Um, it's one of those things where you can't just jump into it with both feet. You have to kind of tip your toe in the water first to start. Um, and that's where I'm at. I'm, my toe's in. I think my whole foot's in now. And the Easy Rec Rack is manufactured locally in Noblesville. And Ira says he plans on keeping his production local as much as possible. You can see if Ira's Easy Rec Rack made the cut from the open call Shark Tank hosted this summer at IMS. Tune in for the season premiere of Shark Tank this Sunday at 9 p.m. only on RTV6. Another way to prepare for a career training through an internship. Students are getting a chance to help future athletes recover from injuries in a medical field program at Central Nine Career Center in Indianapolis. Students head to professional internships to gain lab experience in exercise science and athletic training. In class, they study health, fitness, wellness, and more about the sports world. Students and instructors say this is getting them prepared for careers as athletic trainers, coaches, fitness and exercise leaders, as well as physical therapists. Evidence based practice you know, is a huge thing nowadays um, to implement you know, with their patients and they'll already have that foundation. First day I went in, I kind of fell in love with the program and fell in love with the idea of being able to help others, not even for the idea of money, but for the idea of making sure that others can have the same life that you wish you could have. Students gain dual credit for this program as well as a chance to become CPR certified. Today is the first day of fall, but you can start dreaming of summer again in the middle of winter when the Beach Boys come to Indiana. It was just announced today that the Beach Boys are coming to the new Brown County Music Center in Nashville on Saturday, February 29th. Tickets go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. Thought they'd be going to Kokomo. Yeah. Okay, but I'm bumped. For all you country music fans, a big concert announced today that will take place the night before the Beach Boys. Justin Moore and Tracy Lawrence will bring the Late Nights and Long Necks tour to Bankers Life Fieldhouse on February 28th. These tickets also go on sale Friday at 10 a.m. That's the song where they say way down in Kokomo? Way down in Coke, Bermuda, Bahama. Please sing it all. Whoa, whoa, Keep that's going. Enough. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want uh, Mark to go Acapulco.
you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on. I see clouds, you see clouds. They'll disappear later tonight. Uh, the cumulus clouds, that's visible from our drone camera. And the colors are vibrant. The greens are greens and the blues are blues. We had some rain overnight. This is just from today, the 27 hundredths of an inch. We had 12 hundredths before midnight, so just under four tenths total for Indianapolis. It's been a while since I could show you that all of central Indiana had at least some rain. Not enough rain, but some. Just our second occasion where we've had measurable rainfall this month. We've had four tenths of an inch now for the month, 1.98 inches below average. Uh, and as you look at the year, we're still five inches or so above average. So we're on the surplus. We're just in a deficit here recently. Fall arrived while you were sleeping overnight, and it feels like fall now. Yesterday was 87. We're at 75 in Indianapolis right now, 73 in Peru and Tipton. Temperature in Bedford, 77 degrees. These temperatures will stay comfortable for a couple of days, start to warm up again as we get to the end of the week and into the weekend. At least we've kind of redefined heat because when we warm back up middle to upper 80s, we're kind of eliminating 90s. Maybe someone in the state could touch 90 as we get to the weekend, but probably not. There's your wind out of the northwest. It will lower the humidity even more. If you want to open the windows, go for it. It'll feel pretty good. Don't know what time you set your alarm clock for, but 54 degrees. That is 6 a.m. Temperatures next several mornings will will be comfortable, just not as cool as tomorrow morning. That happens to be the coolest in. The seven-day forecast will be closer to 60 degrees after that. Tomorrow, high temperatures, 78 in Indianapolis, uh, pretty much all in the 70s. 74 is your average high. The wind direction will start to come around to the southwest. So on Wednesday, that southwest wind will gust to 25 miles per hour, 80 the afternoon high. The chance for a shower or thunderstorm at 30%. And just to show you, Wednesday, clouds will increase as we get to the afternoon. Can't rule out an isolated shower or thunderstorm, but that's what it will be. Isolated will keep low chances for any thunderstorms in there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. There are your high temperatures Wednesday. We'll back off a little bit as we go to Thursday, Friday. Up, up, and away. Temperatures warm up as we go into the weekend. That slight chance of thunderstorms Saturday. Sunday's temperature at 84 with a mixture of clouds and sunshine. Temperatures will be warmest as we get to early next week. 87 next Monday. Notice the morning lows that are at 54 tomorrow morning will be in the mid-60s, if not just a little bit warmer as we get to early next week. A friend just texted and said, thank goodness Kevin saved your Kokomo joke. No, you know what? So apparently I can't sing or do comedy. This <laughs> video will get around and you may end up on stage <laughs> with the Beach Boys down in Brown <laughs> County. <laughs> Telling jokes. Careers are right. born. Now we see where this is going. <laughs> Brad's here now. Well, we'll get to him. A golf lesson. We'll get to Brad in just a moment. This afternoon at the Children's Museum of Indianapolis, young golfers got some tips from some of the best golfers in women's professional golf. They did a little putting at the uh, Pete and Alice die course at the sports legend experience there the pros are in town for this week's indie women in tech championship at brickyard crossing competition gets underway later this week now here's brad with more sports news that's pretty exciting stuff there very nice first round thursday at brickyard crossing for the lpga's iowa championship good evening everyone the colts weren't perfect sunday against the falcons the two quarters they started with though were very impressive the third not really and a big finish to get the win a few guys that aren't usually in the highlight reel though stepped up and made big plays all day including a couple of firsts in the first half indy's first touchdown of the game came on an 18 yard pass from jacoby Brissett to zach pascal the first NFL score for the 24-year-old wide receiver. He later caught a 35-yard pass that was the Colts' longest of the day. Next drive after that on the defense, safety Clayton Gathers came up with a huge interception in the red zone, keeping the Falcons off the board. It's the first in the league for Gathers, who's now in his fifth NFL season. Some hard work paying off for a pair of the youngsters. It was good that we got the team win. Um, not necessarily for me personally, but you know the fact that we got this win over the Falcons and we got 1-0. Next week, uh, we got Oakland, so um, it was good to come out there with the guys and execute on, on the plays we had and win the game. We just got to come in this thing together. You know, that's what we did. We came in and together. We know it was 11 versus 1, you know, so that's what we, you know, we played together and we executed. How did it feel to get one finally? <laughs> it felt great. It felt great. It felt great to be a part of the club now. Now I just got to keep it going. 
For the rest of the Colts defense, there was some concern with the absence of two starters. Darius Leonard and Jabal Sheard were out with injuries once again, though. Next man up. On this day, it happened to be Anthony Walker. It's his third season with the team, a fifth-round draft pick in 2017. Easily, though, his best game with the Colts. He had a career-best 14 tackles, felt like a lot more. He was everywhere. Eleven of those were solo stops and a couple for lost yardage. Walker said after the game he was channeling his inner Darius. Well, it turns out being his best Anthony could be a great addition to the Colts' defense. Our coaches do a good job of getting everybody reps, you know, getting everybody prepared for the game, you know, everybody preparing like a starter. That's the credit to those guys who had to step in today as well. Um, but uh, I think, you know, we, we, we all believe in each other. We believe in the system, and, um, you know, when everybody, whoever's out there, you know, we believe that they can make a play, and uh, a lot of guys made plays today. Just three weeks in, never too early to look at the standings. Colts and Houston, two and one. They don't play each other till week seven. Jags and the Titans are each one and two. They are both on the road this week. Tennessee already with a couple of division losses. And be honest, if you were watching the game yesterday, you held your breath when Adam Vinatieri sent up that first kick. Doinked it in from 49 yards out on the opening drive off the left upright. Not pretty, but starting a five for five day. So the kicker back in a groove, perhaps? Well, Vinny just wants everyone to settle down as he gets back to work. Listen, listen, one week doesn't change anything good, bad, or indifferent. Um, you know, uh, I'm happy that I went out there and did my job, and, and uh, but we'll, we'll check out the film and, and make sure we can make any corrections that we need to, me personally and team-wise, and, you know, and, and get back to work. You know, it's just one, just one game and one win, and we just need to keep going. Colts Raiders is week four at Lucas Oil Stadium. That all starts tomorrow. More on the Colts' solid contribution from deep on the depth chart tonight at 11. Back to wrap up the news at 6 next. That's why the milk is so fresh at Meyer. It took me a while. I mean, I had to walk around this. I had to step through it to finally <laughs> figure out it was a puddle. What? We had had rain. It's been that long since we've had rain. Our next chance on Wednesday. Enjoy a beautiful night tonight. Comfortable tomorrow. Beautiful. I would have jumped in the puddle, but you should have I'm sure around. you did. Uh -huh. <laughs> See you back here at 7.